Okay, so for the Peter Pan collar, it's like this kind of cute little rounded collar. Um, and usually when I've seen it, it's usually kind of a flat collar, doesn't have like a stand on it. But the book has like another theory it's suggesting, it's suggesting. And it's saying that um, this A shape doesn't really have a stand, B has a medium one, and C has like kind of a bigger stand. And if you see them stacked on top of each other, all, you know, the green line lining up with center back, you can kind of see that the angle of each neckline is a little bit different the way it wraps around center front. So A is actually a pretty big difference. Oh, actually they're saying A is the full roll. I'm sorry about that. So C, the flat one, the one that doesn't really roll is the most similar to the center front neckline. And that's the one that I'm most familiar with when I see at stores. Um, but they're saying um, you can also have like a full roll, like with a one inch stand. And if so, the color shape's gonna be kind of like A, where it's like really wide, the color shape. B is sort of the middle one, and then C is like practically almost the same as a center front opening. Um, that's what they are suggesting. Um, so, and how to do it, I guess, is, well, you want to figure out the shape of the collar and using the right green line and everything. So their technique is to take your two pattern pieces and overlap them. And um, so the first one's going to be um, with a one-inch stand. So they overlap it a lot. And if you were to compare um, this shape, it's the most open of all three techniques. So because it's so open, you're gonna have like a fold line on your collar is what they are suggesting. And then they also talk about doing the under um, collar and stuff, which you guys learned from the last sample. Um, if you want like a medium stand or a half inch, a partial roll, you overlap it instead of four inches, they only overlap it two inches. And you can kind of see it curves a little more where the four inch one, it was out more. And then the final one, you barely overlap it half an inch. So it's definitely way more curved. And this one will just kind of lay flat with, um, like not really a big stand or anything like that. Um, so that's their, what they're proposing. I figure, I think, well, why don't I just draft all three and in Clo and just see what happens. So I took my front bodice and I took the back and I just made a little four inch um, guideline here. And I'm gonna double click and I'm gonna move this little pivot point to the shoulder and I'll just roll this guy until well, let's see if I'm doing that right. Oh, it wants the shoulder. Oops, I lined it up wrong. I'm supposed to line up the neck. Oopsies, let me zoom in here. Okay, let's just move him. There we are. Okay, and then I'm going to double click that point and <laughs> right, I'll do select and try again. Click, click. I'm going to put that pivot point right here. And okay, so I'm going to rotate it till it hits that line, which I guess not yeah it's about if I go like that it's four inches I guess the shoulder kind of hits four inches that's really open so I think I'm going to change my mind and bring it to like the, the little shoulder is um this kind of matches the illustration but I would say that mine is still out even more than the illustration but I'm just going to leave it we're just um I'm going to do this one for our one inch stand, we'll test. I'm gonna copy it, I'm gonna paste it. Um, and oops, let me show the right tool to copy it. Copy, paste. Okay, and then this time I'm gonna roll it a little bit less. So this will be like our middle one. Maybe, click, click, maybe, oops, click, click. There it goes. Zoom in. And be about halfway. And let's see here. I will copy that. Oops. I don't know why I just did that. Um, copy and paste. And then for the last one, I'm going to click you, click, click. barely overlap so oops. Oh, there we go oh gosh I'm, I'm doing selecting again 
Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and draft a collar from all three of these shapes. So one collar is going to be a really curvy neckline. The other one's a little bit more open. And the last one's super open. And I guess explore, examine the difference between them. Okay, so I kind of jumped ahead. Um, so the next thing I want to do is just draw internal lines of my Peter Pan shape. I went ahead and decided to make them all um, three and a half inches wide because that's what one of them called out to be. So I just added um, a little segment point on the center back. So you can see this, there's like a 3.5 inch line on all three. And now I'm going to get my polygon um, line tool to do internal lines. I'm gonna click and when I get to the shoulder, I'm just gonna hold command so it's like a curve line. And I hit command one more time and then I let go command and I do click click at the top. So I'm kind of just drawing my Peter Pan collar shape here. Um, okay, some of them they trimmed a little at the neck. I guess all of them they trimmed a little. Um, I guess I can go back and do that as well. But anyways, I'll just keep drawing. So I'm gonna go click, holding command, holding command, click click. Okay, so I have all my Peter Pans. Um, okay, so now to trace it, I needed another pattern piece to trace it because I'm tracing lines that go over two different pattern pieces. So, um, so that's fine. So I'm gonna do my trace tool, selecting, holding shift, and just selecting right click, trace this pattern, and just click it here. And then same thing, click, 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 right click, trace this pattern and put it here. Um, and if I have it touch, I should probably have it touch the edge because <laughs> then I can make an actual pattern piece. But here we go, we'll just look again, all the shapes. This one's really open, it's in the middle, and this one's really closed. Um, I'm trying to see if they, they do blend this little point a little bit, so we can do that also. But maybe I'll make sure they're actual pattern pieces first. Um, so let's see here. Let's see if I can actually now trace this guy to be its own pattern piece. Let's figure this out. Is this pattern? Click. Oh, no. Okay. What if I click and say extend and trim the pattern right now? Okay, okay. Let's see if that will let me do it. There you go, let me do it that way. It looks the same. So that's kind of tricky, tricky. Um, I guess I will click you, right click, extend, trim the pattern outline. Okay, let's trace it. Okay, here we are, trace tool. Click, click, holding shift and clicking, right click, trace this pattern, put it underneath. Okay, and then the last one, I'll select, right click, extend, trim the pattern outline. And use my trace tool. Hold shift and then right click, trace this pattern. Cool. Okay, so I'm just gonna delete this one because it's stuck in my head. Okay, so you can go here and you can go here. So we have all three different collars, and so they do kind of smooth out this tool. So I guess I'm just gonna click a little point. I'll right click and just say convert to curve. Mm -hmm. um, let me just look at them. Yeah, they just kind of blended it. Um, why don't I use this instead? Here, let's edit undo a few times. Okay. Yeah. I think we have to convert it to curve. I almost want to delete it and see what happens, but I'm scared to delete it. You know what we can do? Let's select the, both of these. Hold, um, I'm gonna hold shift. It could be a guide. Um, and then let's do a guideline at one point. We'll do some. Oh, no, we don't really want that. Um, hmm. Let's try this. Right click, clone as reference line. Okay, so we'll have it there. And then what happens if I just delete this guy? Oh, okay. 
Then I'm going to add my curve. There we go. I'll put this here. And okay. There we go. That's kind of blended. Um, same with the other one, right? Yes. We also want us to blend the other one. So I think I'll do the same thing. I'll select the whole pattern. I will clone it as a reference line. And then I can just get rid of this point and try and draw in a new one. Okay. <laughs> and the same thing with the last one. Okay, so now I'm going to sew them up and let's see if there's any difference. Okay, so I sewed up the first one that has the one inch roll and I used the fold angle tool. Um, if you look, the line's like a little sharp. So if I click, not the pattern, don't click the pattern, but if you click the uh, internal fold line, um, I can check the fold rendering box off because I use the... Uh, fold angle tool. It's like a different one and see how it makes it a little bit softer. I also did up the particle distance and I changed it to quad mesh instead of triangular mesh. Um, let's look at it without the model. So you can see how this collar goes up an inch and then it folds over. Oops, didn't mean to do that. Um, so that was the first option I did where we overlapped it like four inches. That's kind of our Peter Pan collar for option one. Um, let me just open this up. And I'm also going to go ahead and sew uh, the, and the last one that's supposed to lay flat. Um, the second one, I guess, I'm like losing my papers. Um, it's supposed to roll over, uh, well, probably not one inch, less than an inch. Of course, I'm losing my paperwork. Where is it? Um, yeah. Yeah, anyways, okay, here I go. Okay, um, here's the next color. It has the half inch roll. So do you guys see a difference there? Just rolling less and it still has the same Peter Piper, Peter Piper, <laughs> Peter Pan um, neckline shape. Um, yeah, maybe in the back I could clean up the edge a little. It's kind of pointy. That's not a big deal. I could just round that out a little bit at the bottom. That is option two. And the last one is not going to have a half inch roll. It's just almost going to lay flat. It's going to roll right away. So just having those different curve lines is what's going to give you a neck stand or not is the point of this project. Okay, and here's the last collar that, I mean, I gave it a fold line at 1 8 inch, but it really doesn't roll. It's the most curved um, seam shape. So it's going to take away our model so you can kind of see. So you can see there's no like collar stand and it also has that Peter Pan shape. Um, so that's what the book is telling you how to do this. I guess in my head, I'm like, well, what if I did use the super curved shape and I made the fold line one inch, would it work? Or no, if it's one inch away, is it really, is that going to work or not? So um, I can try that next actually. Okay, so I'm, um, I'm using the one that was really curved around the neck that's supposed to just roll without any um, neck stand. And I forced a one inch neck stand by giving it a fold line. And look what it does. Do you see how it's kind of wavy? So that's interesting. So just having this shape, um, it just needs to lay flat. So now we know what would happen if we do want a one inch fold. We can't really have this super sharp curve around the neck and around, I guess, the collar or else it's going to be kind of wavy because we didn't have that problem on the other one that we drafted that was a different shape. So I thought that was kind of neat and interesting. I don't know, let me know if there's anything else that you guys noticed too.
Okay, so right now I have all my projects opened in one file. Um, this first one was the one we drafted with the one inch collar and right next to it was the last one we drafted that was supposed to just roll and not have any collar stand, but I forced a one inch collar. You can kind of see how it got like the ripple effects around the collar edge, but, um, but the original one that we did that kind of has a different neck shape, the collar does not have any ripples. It's really nice and straight. Um, and then I also put right next to each other, this is the same pattern, and this guy lays flat, and there's no ripple issues on this guy. It's just that I, I forced the one-inch roll on the ripply guy where this one, it's just a one-eighth inch roll. So I just thought that was interesting to see what that pattern shape does if you were to give it a one-inch roll versus, um, you know, a different pattern shape. It's over here. So, And then I just threw in the one that has the half-inch pattern shape also, just kind of compares well. Um, let's see if I can get rid of the models and you can kind of just peek in them um, as well. So, I don't know, it's kind of interesting. We're just trying to learn and learn about shapes and try to get a little bit more familiar with pattern shapes and how they'll actually lay once you sew them. So I thought this was kind of a neat little demonstration.